Yeah, I spot a hyena here. I think Luna likes being held like a baby. Do you like being held like a baby, Luna? What? Okay, this is an Amor's vlog, not a Luna vlog. You're not leaving my arms, are you? My arm's getting tired from holding it. Anyway, <laughs> this is book 15. Um, what is it called? The Escape. And this is a Marco book. And Marco is quickly becoming one of my favorite characters because he's one of those who's the comic relief but has like hidden deaths. I like. I like when comic relief characters aren't just funny 24-7. That being said, this book ripped out my heart and stomped on it. So in this book, the animals find out about, about a year underwater facility and they go to, you know, mess with it of course. And they turn into hammerhead sharks to accomplish that mission. Marco was... What are the cats doing? Now oh, they're just killing each other again. Marco was like nearly killed by sharks in the previous book and I has left him with some like pretty bad PTSD and I don't like that he got over his fear of sharks so quickly because usually PTSD takes a while to to actually get rid of but he does eventually turn to a shark and helps the Amorphs blow up this underwater facility. And they found out they're using it to train hammerhead sharks, to control hammerhead sharks actually, to to be their their water in water soldiers because they want to conquer another plant called plant called Lyran. And Lyran is like Europa, it's like an ocean planet, and the Lyrans live underwater. And they can't just do what they do as humans because Lyrans are psychic. There's no secrets, they can easily tell if somebody has a parasite in their brain. I think I remember there was a book where the Lyrans were in it, like, more prominently than this one. I remember thinking the Lyrans are very interesting. I forgot. I should probably show you the inside cover. And flip book. It'd be nice if the camera would focus. I don't have one of those fancy cameras. So in so in the heart of this book is Marco finding out his mother, it, who is Mr. One's host, is there, and the two meet, and Mr. One slash Marco's mom knows who Marco is, but they don't, they don't know he's an animorph, and that secret very closely, like it almost comes out in this book, and I'm like, no, 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 you idiot! But, you know, it's a very emotional time, and, you know, it is a very emotional book, and Marco is at his most serious in this book, I think. The, like, this is the most serious he's ever been in the in this series. As far as, th stop throwing your friend around. And uh, it's an interesting conflict. Like, Marco even said in, at one point, if his mom died, he would be normal again. He would be sad, but then he put it behind him and move on. He'd just deal with grief. But as long as his mom is a controller, he can't stop wanting to rescue her. So it's almost like it would be better if she were dead, but then his mother would be dead, and that's not, that's also not a good thing. 
Marco has a rough. I'm surprised he can keep his sense of humor through all that. And speaking of humor, this book is one of the more serious ones, but there are moments of humor which is good because this otherwise I'd be crying. So the like the computer when it's when it basically self destructs, it says this facility will now be flooded with water in thirty five minutes. Thank you, and have a nice day. That was that was funny. And also, Visser 1 and Visser 3 just like spending the whole time just like at each other's throats. Like they treat the invasion of plants as if it's just an, like, oh, that annoying guy at the office that I hate. I, I like that. It reminds me. I, I guess Steven Universe reminds me of Amos more than Amos reminds me of Steven Universe. That reminds me of the diamonds and the home world and that. So I, li I like that. They're tearing around the house now. Okay, sorry. Sorry I'm distracted. Sorry I'm distracted this episode. The cats are tearing around the room. I will go outside but it's incredibly windy and it'd be hard to hear anything over the wind. Alright, see you guys in the next video. Something I forgot to add, and I have no idea why the camera is red, but something I forgot to add is that uh, I think there's a subtle fourth wall joke in there. Marco starts talking about the irony gods, and I'm just like, do you mean K.A. Applegate?